Ich brauche eine Kuscheleinheit. Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and today I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite activities in life, cuddling. I'm a person that needs a ridiculous amount of proximity to feel safe and happy. Some days I'm not really a girlfriend, I'm more like a koala or a very annoying backpack, especially on days where I feel somewhat off, insecure or sick. I basically want physical contact all around the clock. There cannot be enough cuddling, hugging or snuggling. Luckily, the German language has a lot of awesome terms to describe the number one activity of people like me. We can easily express ourselves and ask for more and more love without repeating ourselves. And in this video, I want to share them with you both the love and the words. To cuddle means kuscheln in German. Imagine the typical Netflix and chill situation with your partner or a good friend. Your head on their shoulder, hmm, or the other way around, and arms around each other. You know what I mean. A puzzle of two pieces, or more than two. I don't know what you guys are into. If you sit next to each other but are not yet cuddling, the process of coming closer and initiating body contact to snuggle up to somebody is called sich ankuscheln or also sich anschmiegen. You may also hear anlehnen, to lean. People that want to comfort you often ask if you need eine Schulter zum Anlehnen, a shoulder to lean against. And that can be taken literally or figuratively. Similar to ankuscheln is einkuscheln. Einkuscheln doesn't even need a second person. All you have to do is cuddle up in a cozy spot. It often involves a blanket. <laughs> ich kuschle mich in eine Decke ein. If I look deranged now, you know why. Auf der Couch einkuscheln or im Bett einkuscheln describes a person getting really comfy covering themselves with a blankie. It's basically the act of turning yourself into a human burrito. Then there is durchkuscheln, which means that one person cuddles another all over and wildly. Same as durch. Apparently my dishwasher wants to kill me. Same as durchkitzeln, to tickle somebody until they beg you to stop. It's usually meant to make the other person let go and ease their mind. But so far we've only talked about verbs. An adjective related to kuscheln is kuschelig, which either means that somebody is cuddlesome or that somebody or something is cuddly and soft. Exactly like that. Or imagine a super comfy pullover. Ein kuscheliger Pullover. Alternatively, you could say, der Pullover ist kuschelweich. Literally, the pullover is cuddle soft. So soft you want to cuddle with it. Like this one. Say no more, I know it's pretty ugly, but it's awesome. But as I said, kuschelig can also refer to the appearance of a person. Take for example Eric. His body type is what I would call Kuschelig. And what I like most about that is his Kuschelbauch, a nickname that is lovingly given to a soft belly, mostly on men. Eric is a bear, so it doesn't really come as a surprise that Germans often call chunkier guys Kuschelbär. Cats are sometimes called Kuscheltiger, cuddle tigers. And I've heard couples calling each other Kuschelmaus or Kuschelhase. Das Kuscheltier, the cuddle animal, is a plushie in German. An alternative name is Das Plüschtier. But let's be honest, das Kuscheltier is a hundred times more adorable. Because that's what you do with them! Yes, even at 28 years of age, I cuddle the fluff out of them! Not literally, don't give me that look. It's not only animals though. You can add Kuschel to pretty much everything and simply fluff up your life. Die Kuscheldecke, die Kuschelsocken, die Kuschelmusik, das Kuschelkissen. Kuschel works for everything that is, well, Kuschelig. So like for a Kuschelbrust. Psst. Der Kuschelkaktus, die Kuschelkreissäge or der Kuschelstacheldrahtzaun don't make much sense, but nothing is impossible in the German language. If you like cuddling with a cactus, fine. Everyone has their kink, I guess. The best and cutest word with Kuschel, however, is by far die Kuscheleinheit, which is like a quantum of cuddles. I love to say, ich brauche eine Kuscheleinheit. Ding, 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 excuse me. One serving of cuddles, please. To go. 
Alternatively, you can say Streicheleinheit, a quantum of caressing. It's mostly used for pets though. My cat Tony loved his Streicheleinheiten. He really enjoyed that time that I dedicated to petting him. However, be careful with the word petting. It also exists in German, but it's really not used for animals. In English, petting can also describe this stage before sleeping with somebody, right? Lots of proximity, intense cuddling and kissing, which then may lead to more. Well, that is what it means in German. That and only that. Hi. Hi, Kelly. Sag mal, was sind eigentlich deine Hobbys? Um, petting mit meine Tiere. Was? You see, it's dangerous. Another word for cushion is knuddeln. It's like a more playful, childish version of it. And same as kuschel, knuddel can be added to common nicknames. So you could call your partner knuddelbär, knuddelmaus or knuddelhase. Question is, do you want to? Or do you prefer schmusemaus or schmusehase? As schmusen is yet another term for to cuddle. I'd say schmusen is slightly more timid, more gentle. You don't run into the other person's arms and squeeze them until they grasp for air. Guilty. No, schmusen is more shy, more like snuggling up to the other party, caressing them, putting your face close to theirs. People like me that love to cuddle, mostly women, are sometimes jokingly referred to as die Schmusekatze, the cuddle cat. Eine Schmusekatze loves to hug and cuddle. They are very verschmust. Now two other words that are related to cuddling are Herzen and Liebkosen. I personally don't use them, but I can imagine that they are more popular in other parts of Germany or maybe in Austria. So I wanted to include them anyway. Also, come on, they are way too cute to be skipped. I mean, the first one literally means to heart someone and the second contains Lieb which is kind or lovely. Now that we looked at all the different words that Germans express to cuddle with, let's talk about the things that you can do while you cuddle and how to say that in German. One element of high quality cuddles is streicheln, which means to caress somebody or to gently stroke over somebody's skin. And that also works for animals. Was sind eigentlich deine Hobbys? <clears throat> Meine Tiere streicheln. Oh, süß. See? much better. Then there is kraulen, to fondle. You know, basically the same as streicheln, but additionally using your fingernails. Of course not werewolf style. Then you're just going to end up scratching your partner. Jemanden kratzen, unless that's what they like. But yeah, usually it's done very carefully and tenderly. Sometimes when one of my daughters acts particularly cute, I give them a loving pat on the hat or on the shoulder. That's too low for the camera, but they are not that tall yet. That's called tetschen in German. Jemandem den Kopf tetschen or jemandem die Schulter tetschen. Attention though. Never ever confuse that one with touchen or untouchen. Because that's a very intrusive and creepy Uncle Herbert kind of touching. It almost sounds like to touch, right? Which makes it even more dangerous for English speakers, I think. Imagine I'm at a party and somebody just randomly touches my boobs or my butt. Hello. Ah. That's the touchen. It implies that something sexual is going on without the touched person's consent, which sucks. Now lastly, something more positive. A very basic yet amazing way of showing somebody affection. Jemandem Nähe geben in German. I'm talking about hugs. A hug is die Umarmung. Literally the around arming. And to hug somebody is jemanden umarmen. You can also say jemanden in den Arm nehmen. Not to be confused with jemanden auf den Arm nehmen, because that means to fool somebody. If you are the sporty kind of person, you may like jumping into other people's arms. Jemandem... <laughs> jemandem in the Arme springen. And I actually have a story about that because I did that on my first day with Eric. Quite risky, honestly, because I wasn't sure that he had the same feelings that I had for him. I mean, he might have just turned around or dropped me, but everything went well. And then I'm pretty sure you know it as well, this typical kind of hug that grandparents give to their grandchildren. Like this very overboarding hug that is a little bit too much of everything. I would say that's the perfect description of jemanden drücken in German. 
literally to squeeze somebody. As a child, you hear this pretty often from your older relatives. Oh, Schatz, jetzt lass dich doch erstmal drücken. Painful, but also cute. Seriously, you should be happy about every kind of hug you're getting from your family. All right, babbits, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this cuddly, huggy video and you learn something new. Let me know which other words you know that involve cuddling, be it in German or any other language, or maybe you feel like sharing a story that you have with a loved one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please leave a like because that would make me really, really happy. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one. And if you want to support my channel even a bit more, then you can also find me on Patreon. I would really, really, really appreciate your help. I don't wanna sound needy or something, but it's actually becoming quite difficult to maintain this channel financially. So yeah, I'm happy about every kind of support. All the best, I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.